Hey guys, DeVito Chips here, and today I'm gonna be reviewing Spider-Man No Way Home. You might be looking at me and thinking, Denver, Spider-Man No Way Home came out like three months ago. Yes, but when you live on an island in Alaska, you get to see it in February. And with that, I'm gonna be sharing with you my thoughts, so hopefully it's not too late. But before we jump into the video, please be sure to ring the bell, subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment when you're done, let me know what you thought of the movie. Let's jump into the pros. To kick things off, I just wanna say that the chemistry between the leads and the co-stars is incredible. You really do see the these relationships cementing over the course of these three movies and this movie does an amazing job encapsulating all those different friendships and relationships that Peter Parker has with the people in his life. I genuinely felt my heartstrings tugged between multiple moments with the characters and that's saying a lot because over the last two movies we really didn't get a lot of those emotional stakes but here in this film the actors and actresses did a great job of coming together and making the relationships feel real. Another thing I loved about the film was the fact that it finally finally pushes Tom Holland's Spider-Man to his emotional and physical limits. The last two series of Spider-Man films really succeeded in pushing their heroes to their absolute limits and therefore bringing out the very best qualities inside of them. I always thought with Tom Holland's Spider-Man that we really hadn't reached that epiphany in the series just yet. Of course, he's a young man in school, he's in high school, he's more concerned about his grades and his girlfriend and best friend and all this different stuff, but this movie took a very different turn and really matured Spider-Man as a character and Peter Parker as a man. As a result, I feel more invested in his character emotionally than I did in his last two films, which I think is really cool. It's been a long time coming. Another major pro for me was seeing all three Spider-Men united on the screen for the first time. I'm a millennial, so you gotta know, Tobey Maguire is my all-time favorite Spider-Man, but I'm telling you what, him, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, seeing all three of them together, it was a feat of imagination and art Art, and I just loved it. While the cameos in this film weren't nearly as big as an end game, this moment in the movie when they're all three united together holds a special place in my heart. And not gonna lie, I hope Andrew Garfield gets a third Spider-Man movie out of this. My last pro about the film might be a bit controversial, but it's gotta be Green Goblin. Every time that character was on the screen, there was a sense of fear, anxiety, and unpredictability that I felt. It's been a long time since a villain in a movie has kept me in the dark, and I honestly didn't know what the guy was gonna do at any given moment. I didn't know when, whether he was gonna snap, whether he was gonna freak out, whether he was gonna end up being a good guy, whatever, I just didn't know. And major kudos to William Dafoe as an actor who is playing Green Goblin just as well, if not better, than he did in the early 2000s. With an 18 year break from the character, I honestly don't even know how that's possible. However, no movie is perfect, and so without further ado, the cons. The whole storyline, while engaging enough, wasn't perfect. The first half of the movie, to me, felt like a fetch quest, what with all the hunting down of the villains and everything. We've seen that done in other movies before and I just felt like it was a bit of plot padding. It also doesn't help that Doctor Strange was doing things that the character typically wouldn't do. Personally, I felt like they could have done a little more with the story rather than doing their wheels spinning and waiting for the other Spider-Man to show up in the movie. My final con on the list is that even though the movie was engaging and did hold my attention and as well had some great action, it felt a bit bloated and overlong and honestly, I felt like the movie could have been trimmed down by at least half an hour. If the movie clocked in at just about two hours, I felt like it would have been perfect, but two and a half hours? That was pushing it a little bit. Despite that, I had a blast watching the movie and without a doubt, it is the best of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, in my opinion, which is why I'm gonna be giving it an eight out of 10. It piqued my interest, it blew my mind wide open to the potentials of the MCU regarding Spider-Man, and to be completely honest, I've never been more in the dark about where the series is gonna go, and I absolutely love that. And by the next time we see Peter Parker, we're gonna see him in an entirely new element, which excites me. But hey, maybe you thought that my score should have been higher. Maybe you think it should have been lower. What are your thoughts on the movie? Please be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, ring the bell, subscribe to this channel, like this video if you'd like to see more review videos, like this one. Thanks so much for watching this all new episode of DeVito Movies and TV. Take care and be blessed.